Well, ain't this been a while. Hi again, everyone. I am Christian, the Crusader Shriver, and welcome back here to PT Racing TV, where we're now live here tonight at Daytona International Speedway, where we see the return, the presence, and the future of all that encompasses racing in general. This is the return of the Green Round Girl Fast and Fun Truck Series, and this is their season opener here at Daytona International Speedway. Hi again, everyone. I am Christian again. Uh, I've already got through the intro. You already know my name. As we get ready to go to the action here tonight, though, we're getting fielded in, ready for the action, ready for the battles that are going to plague Daytona in this tri-oval D-shake configuration track. It's going to be a very challenging little track here. Obviously, the wind's here, kind of keeping up the distance, keeping up for a plate track style racing. But how will the drivers manage and handle the speeds remains to be unseen. But first... Before we can even get into that, we must first start off with our lineup here tonight. The driver's lineup shows in the first place spot tonight. Matthew Moniak in the number three is the number one seed going into the first race of the season. Garcinaro, second place. Row number two is going to be Greg Zanifi and Jancic. The four is outside. It's the 82 of Brock Whitehead. Row number three is going to be Adam Scrum and the 95 is outside. That's the 112, Kevin Ward. Row number four, the Marauder, James Harris. And the number four is outside. That's the 91, Kevin Kersher. Row number five is going to be Sheldon Pearson. The eight is outside. That is the 48, George Young. Row number six is going to be the 35 of Dan. The man starter is outside. That is the 15 of Jason Taylor. Row number seven sees the 51 of Charles Whitehead. It is outside. That's Eric Stoy in the 41. Row number eight is going to see Richard Fornshell. And the number 90 is outside. That will be Sean Bounty in the 34. Row number nine is going to be Tyler Meeks in the 23. It is outside. That will be Daniel Half in the 32. Row number 10, Christian Wilcox, the 53, it is outside. The man beats William Mann, Jr. in the 29. Row number 11 sees Robert Jalad there in the 54, it is outside. That's Brandon Ball in the 17. Row number 12 is Trey. Trey came to play Whitehead in 33, it is outside. Jacob Gibbons in the number 20. Row number 8, row number 13 
is going to be Robert Wynn in the 16. He is outside. That'll be Stephen Madden in the 26. Row number 14 is going to be John Thacker. The 56 is outside. Joshua Caudill, the 25. Row number 15, Robert Wynn Jr. The 89 is outside. John the Diamond, 39. Row number 16 is going to be Jamie Graham in the 21 is outside. Derek, Derek, the 10. Final stars, Russ the full board. Kilgore in the 2 is outside. Randy Cawthon, the 31. And race fans, this is it. They're back. And they're coming back with a vengeance. It's the Green Mountain Grills Fast and Fun Truck Series at Daytona International Speedway. the charge off out of turn four this time by the tri-oval section they go this is where things heat up around here on pizza racing tv we're getting back to the action live now here we go new season new start some new drivers involved in this one here obviously the veterans though out of the gate will show off what they can do and how they can handle everything in around in this part's out of the gate here, out of those, get a strong start. Matthew Moniak will continue the race lead as he gets a bit of a draft help there from the 48. Greg Zanfi and Janzik with the 88. Of course, Snyder up on the outside already trying to get his first win of the season and his first ever win in the Truck Series. Snyder with a victory in the uh, Fast Fun IROC Challenge slash Riley Challenge, but he has never won in the Trucks or the Cup Series. Will that change here tonight? He's going to have a lot of drafting to do and a lot of work to do out and play in this continuation. There's so many things that can go wrong and so many things that can go good, depending on how you look at it and how you perceive it. Field working their way around yet again, still out of the front straightaway. No trouble so far. Everyone remains clean. You see a lot of the pink schemes out here tonight. Get used to seeing them. You'll see them a lot around here on these parts. Has problems already for Dan, the man starting the 14. He'll come. He'll bring the Green Mountain Grill, white and blue design machine. A bit of a scratching halt here. A little, he'll have a little bit of work to do off that and have to get his lap back eventually, but this is definitely not what he wants to do or have out right now. The thing you're going to want to notice here tonight, obviously, compared to the Cup Series, is that you're not going to see them just burning the momentum and really burning these things up as fast as they want to go. That's not going to happen here. This is going to be a very technical style racing. You're going to see them trying to get the draft lines pushed in a lot harder. You're going to see them really go for the outside more than the inside in these cases. The inside zone is really the only spot you can do with that is pushing your driver around and hopefully getting them to come off the course. 34 of the biggest and the baddest truck drivers here. Just furrowing around the track here, coming at great speeds and great momentum. Get a good look at some of the paint schemes around here and some of the drivers as well. You saw that was the number 26. That is Stephen Madden. Good to see him back out on the show here in that, Chevro in that Chevrolet Silverado. While the other fellow Silverados up ahead currently having to deal with the Ford F-150s and Toyota Tundras in this round. George Young, number 48, continuously pushing his momentum here, trying to keep away from the bottom end to stay in that mid-pack level. His mid-pack racing team right now currently kind of in the hunt, staying out of the, out of the mess so far. But again, this is where things really just get kind of interesting for me. Is you have so much going on down there. You have so much really playing at stake here. Oh, and as I say that, a little problem down there for Gar Snyder. Gets sent out of turn two. He gets pushed all around a little bit too much. Oh, they're getting extremely loose down there. What on earth? Now, I'm not sure. Maybe there's some bumping and banging down there for that race lead out of the gate. But they were getting a little bit intentious down there. That is for sure. Good lord, the what the Danny fam James like almost getting sent straight to the upper room while Gar Snyder got sent to the back of the outhouse a little bit. He is gonna have his work his way into the from the top five back to the race lead. And that could be very difficult right here now. You watch there on the back straight the front straightaway trouble. Tyler makes the 23, slams into the wall protection down there. No caution there, no one gonna start it up just yet. They're gonna say no, we're gonna continue to race on. 
We'll have to go and take a look at the PT Mr. Replay here and see what transpired between him and Meeks, between Meeks and the other driver involved. Well, there is certainly a big problem down there that they did not want to see happen. But again, that is what could happen and transpire around here. Here's another look at it. Here's the chopper cam. This is the three wide slow leading into the front straightaway. Generally, you don't have too much trouble here. But watch very carefully as they start to kind of pull the grip back in. Slight drift up. Meeks gets slammed and taken for a ride there. He manages to avoid too much trouble, but loses a lot of time in the process. And now he's going to find himself behind the eight ball, if you will. And that's the last thing you want to do around here. Couldn't quite get a good clear get identification on who was involved in that one as well. We got into it, but unfortunately that is just one of those racing group deals, I would say. Just getting a little too up close and personal. Down into three, into four now. You see Brock Whitehead and the Zenny fan, Jantic, both teammate drivers this season. Rocking and rolling there with the Oval Sim Performance crew here. And so far out of the gate, I got to admit, pretty impressive with the drivers that have been able to hang in there and really keep themselves in play and out of trouble. That's the one thing I was very worried about was, would they be able to do that? Would they be able to keep themselves in a, content, in a contentious battle in a contentious race? Thomas Whitehead comes on board saying, come on, white, bit, white bits and... What's going on, Chris? Hey, good to see you, buddy. See you, McDonald. A lot of aggressive driving to only be six laps in. A little bit, yeah, but I mean, you get to remember there, McDonald. There's, oh, as I see that, we got a little bit of company coming up front. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh! Oh, my Lord. Someone just got sent past the upper room. I think he just got sent straight to the shadow realm. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. Well, uh, McDonald, I think that thing you said about aggressive driving a minute ago, uh, yeah, it got a little bit worse. Where do I even begin with this one? Let's just pull it to the replay. Let's find out what happened. All right, we're going to take it to the far chase cam here. We're going to take it to our – this is not the chopper cam. Now, here's what transmodified coming down. You see a three-wide suit engaged. And there it is right there. That was the 91 Kevin Kershaw. He gets in with the 112 of Kevin Ward. That's where that starts. But who was the driver that went flipping in the air and literally crashed out more than most drivers can? I think that might have been Adam Scrum here. Adam Scrum. Here's another look at it. Watch when the beer in. Watch Harris. Tries to close the gap. They're going into a bit of a pickle. Ward's trying to avoid the traffic. And then, oh my god. NASCAR Heat and de Dirt to Daytona be damned. Ouch, ouch, and what's that other word? Oh, yeah, ouch. Wow. What a wild mess that one is, and apparently that technical difficulties on that truck is the same resulting in our, end, our stream ending for a second. There we go. That should refresh everything here, so sorry for that. Yikes. And again, I, I mean, I really am kind of questioning why they were so aggressive out of the gate. They could have been a little bit more patient. I mean, at the same time, though, and I do realize that this is a play track, so a lot of drivers may not be thinking it that way. They may be thinking, no, we got to go big or we got to go home. That's the only way to go about it. I don't know, though. You gotta be, you're got to be. definitely going to see a lot of hard racing, though. It is a contact sport for a reason, but I don't think this is what they meant by that. As they wheel him off here, we're now going to bring it in and talk with the number 20. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jacob Givens. He now joins me here in the Gas Monkey Garage machine. And uh, Jacob, looked like you got a little bit of damage there coming from the corners and the runs there, but you managed to get cleaned up for the most part. What did you see when it all transpired? I didn't really see much of anything. I had it about missed, and then James came up to the grass and got me. So it is what it is. They were wrecking everywhere. I really wasn't much I could do about that. For sure there, but nevertheless, you're obviously trying to start off the season. i got to believe you guys are as bright as determined as anything to really get the season started off right. What does it mean to you now, knowing that you got to gotta go way back in the pack and wipe your way back up here with this one? Well, I, I, my strategy was to lay back anyways and save a fast repair, but then I got grouped up with my guys, and we just decided to start moving forward. We were moving forward, and then obviously that all happened. 
So now I'll go back to the back, take my fast repair, and then try to save the last one as long as I possibly can. For sure there, whenever last special wishes of luck to you, Givens, and the Southern Speedway Motorsports team. Thanks, sir. Jacob Givens coming on board here tonight. Have a little listen in. We'll go ahead and chat with other drivers here in a minute. And hey, McDonald, I don't even remember what the heck I was going to say, honestly. That's, that's one of those moments like I don't even remember, and I don't think anybody wants me to remember, so... We'll take it down now, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk with uh, maybe the guys that are kind of living up to their nickname right now. Three Wide Motorsports and the Marauder James Harris joins me in. And Harris, last season you guys were not running for the championship, but this time the shoe is on the other foot. You're going for it big and broke here tonight, ain't you? Yeah, we decided with two fast repairs to just kind of go for broke at the beginning and see what happens. I guess we just saw what happens. So uh, <laughs> with, only, with only one FR left, we're going to kind of, at least me anyway, I'm just going to hang back a little bit and watch the race unfold. You think with the two extra repairs, a lot of these guys might be a little bit more aggressive here from point A to point B at the beginning to the end here throughout this race? Yeah, probably. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's Daytona. It's open a race. So we got to make it exciting. So uh, that's one of the reasons I gave the two fast repairs for tonight. I don't think we need to make any more exciting than EMC and Adam Scrum just really <laughs> flying through the air like he just got shot out of a cannon. So, But nevertheless, uh, Harris, best wishes of luck to you and the three wide motorsports team. All right, man, thanks. The Marauder James Harris, last season, you may have heard it just a second ago, he did not in any way go for the championship. He was actually battling in a little warfare between him, Jantic, and Childs. This season, though, the shoe is on the other foot. William Ann saying, let's go, William 29, Mac Daddy Proud. William, good to have you on board. The true, the originator, that's Papa Beast, I believe. The original Man Beast is out there somewhere right now. I believe he is. Oh, he's down in the 24th area here at the moment. Down four spots from where he started at on the contention of the qualifying. Field getting ready to stretch him back out and put a fight back under the hood and put the race back to show. Off the corners of the front straightaway here, back into the green flag. Green flag high in the air. We're back to the action. And out of the gate on the start here, the drivers already, they are backing off, and a lot of it could be due to the fact they're trying to figure out maybe if they can save up for one big haul or one big runoff. A lot of ways to do it. The main thing, though, is you stay focused and look for your timing when you can and, stri and strike when your opportunity arises. Down onto the back straightaway they go here. Still a battle between drivers here. Christian Wilcox now moving up 13 spots in this field. He started back in 19th. He's currently in 6th. While B-17's Brandon Ball. Remember the last time we saw this man on a play track. It was back at Talladega, the season opener there. He would go on to win the first race of the season, but did not have the career-making season and performance he feels he should have just done and does, as owed. He t I talked to him earlier today about it, and he said, yeah, it was nice to win that one, but it, was, it would have been nicer if I could have been a little more consistent. And here to now, he's going to be looking to try and do that and then some, but he's got a long road ahead of him and a tough field of drivers to knock out of that position. The attacker of Cone Lines, Mario John Thacker, also on the camera here. As you see, Matthew Moniak, number three, he's back and way off. He says, uh, I don't want nothing to do with you guys right now. I'm going to stay back here and chill out. You guys have fun upstairs. And upstairs we go. The 40 is in. The Zanny fam once again going to go out of here with that 112 of Kevin Ward. And despite the damage on the left side there, Ward is doing okay here. He's actually hanging on here by a pretty good margin. Oh, and as I say that, it gets a little bit of a bump and push there from Brock Whitehead, the 82. Now, I'm not sure. Uh, now, that little blink there, that was Brock's end, not our end. But Brock right now currently trying to hang in there, trying to push him up as much as he can here, trying to get everything he's got on the bottom lane. But I think he's also trying to find a way to help out the 40 of Jancic. Remember, they are teammates, and teammates here in this series can be your saving grace. Brock is the youngest truck series driver to win out on the circuit he did that back at Texas Motor Speedway last season. This season, he said he's not worried about the past. He's worried about the future. And he said the future is bright with my team and my crew, and I'm hoping for everything I can. Russ the full board, Kilgore in the number two here, currently moving the chains. He's up 25 spots. He is the ultimate hard charger of the night. Make that 26. He started back in the 33rd running. He has in seventh place.
field marching their way around. All drivers looking for stability, looking for a runoff when they can and hoping for the best in other places they need it. Steve, I was going to say, probably if you're talking about what I was going to say with the, um, before we we're going to go wrecking out, I'm like, I'm trying to, I was trying to figure out if maybe they would be a little bit more aggressive off the starts and off the runs, but I mean, even when we just talked with James and Ronald Harris there about that whole fact that they've got two instant pairs, you know, for someone that is brand new to iRacing and may not know what we're talking about here on the Facebook live stream or you're watching up on our YouTube end later on, what we're talking about is when you get into that, when you get into repairs, what it does is if you damage the truck up or car or vehicle, whatever you're driving, at any shape or form or any way, iRacing will grant you a instant repair. Now, this is done via either from the official's end or it is done via the hosted end, which allows drivers to choose how many they want to give and how many they want to give out. You are only allowed a select amount unless you do unlimited. And in this case, with the select amount and this being with only two for a plate track like this, this could make drivers a little bit more anxious and aware to just kind of make a move or make a show of themselves. A lot of people these days tell me, though, they only use one inch to repair out there because they don't want nothing to do with big wrecks and big situations and silliness, as they put it. To me, I just say it's just hard racing and folks just wanted to make a name for themselves. He's speaking of making a name for himself right now. How about this? Look up front here. Eric Stoy, the number 41 driver in that bush. Light Chevrolet Silverado has the advantage leading down here. He marches and manhandles his way across the field. But right behind him, he got a little three wide possible salute coming up. That's Jamie Graham there in the 21. He's also making a charge for the run. Maybe trying to make himself famous early on and get himself up to the front. We go on board with him. The 82 of Brock Whitehead coming off the charge there on the bottom lane. Everyone looking for everything they can, trying to stabilize them down, hoping for the best. Every driver for themselves here. There are no gimmies in this part of town. The interstate batteries, number 51, Charles Whitehead, the 51. That is the Ford F-150 duty machine. He's down five spots, if you can believe it. He started back at 13th here tonight. Now Charles, now the one advantage though about a Daytona or Talladega track is that, yeah, there is a little bit of luck involved in it, but I feel like more than anything, there is more of a substantial circumstance involving how well can you handle your nerves and control of the vehicle. So for those at home that want to say that, oh, this is easy, you can do this any day. Like, I'll tell you right now, these play tracks are not easy. They are very, very difficult just for a multitude of different reasons. The biggest thing I've noticed, and I've always said before, is just maintaining grip and maintaining stability on where you're at in position and where you're at on the track. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it's, well it pretty much says what it means. You're trying to make sure you're keeping every position that you can. You're trying to stay away from getting into too much trouble. So sometimes when you see a driver come up with a run, sometimes you must have to throw that big block to try and keep them away from taking the race lead away from you. And with these truck series, Really, you need every driver that's clean and good and good to go to stay up there with you. But even you see the 112 Kevin Ward, he's getting really sight. He's getting real loose coming into those entries into that turn because he's just carrying so much speed. Oh, and as I say that, they may want to back it down a little bit because they got a lot of traffic in front of them. The Sandy fan will have the advantage on the bottom line. But what will Eric Stoy do? He's going to stay a little lower right below. Oh, sees where they goes. Getting out of the way there, managing to avoid conflict of interest and going to conflict of troubles out there. Trying to get an ID read on that driver that they passed on by. I think I saw a 30, you know, it was a 95. That's all that, that's Adam Strom. That's Adam Strom there in the 95 and that Toyota Tundra. Remember, we saw him earlier on. He went for a ride there coming off that same entry into turn three. Gets the truck back out, but he's going to fall a lap down. Now what he wants to see at all here. And the speeds they carry here tonight in truck series over 191 miles per hour. No, you did not hear that wrong. That's 191 miles per hour. They are bolstering and destroying the equipment at that speed. They are bad fast to say the least. 
Keeping up to the distance in the zone so far. No driver getting a little too anxious, a little too over the top here, or bigger for their own bridges. The number 35 here, that is Dan, the man, Starner here. Coming right up ahead, he's got the 88 of Snyder on the left side. Meanwhile, on his right side, that's Zach Derrick and the number 10. Zach, I believe, has been with us before, so it is good to see him come on board for the first for the next time here at PT Racing TV. Some new faces in the house, though, we talked about earlier. Jamie Graham, that number 21, made a little bit of a runoff on the outside earlier on, maybe scared a few of the drivers. Eric Stoy currently in the 41. He's actually battling for the race lead still with the Zanny fan Craig James. And if I said it once, I'll say it again. If you can ever get a win off on Janzek, no matter what track you're on, honestly, that's a win. That is like the biggest and most satisfying feeling ever. I don't even care if it's Daytona or Talladega because even he can reign supreme there on those tracks. Janzek and Harris, as well as Childs when he was around, they were by far the toughest of the tough and bad fast of the, man, of the beast on the track. But one name in particular we do not see here as well that was really the guy that everyone walked, talked about and really was keeping an eye on in the truck series last season because he just kept dominating everything was Brian Ronzo. This season, Lorenzo is not with us, unfortunately. His season championships pretty much been uh, kind, of, kind of taken over to the Cup Series. He now has to try and race over there for that title, but not doing too bad for himself. Currently still in the top 20 in points as all drivers kind of get a little too cluttered around, get, gather around the campfire because they smell a burning sensation up front as the 82 continues to blink out a little bit and starting a fire between all the drivers, just wondering when is the when is the carnage going to begin because of it. The last thing on a play track or any close corner racing you ever want to see is someone just really start to blink in and out a little bit. That is that is a danger zone. It's a very, very scary thought. It's like the worst feeling ever when it just starts to get to that point. Marching them off out around turn one. They will go once more. And Jandik and Stoy still battling it out. You can see Stoy. Has a clean cut open area up there, but the 112 Kevin Ward, despite that damage on the left side, still looking for his first truck series win ever on PT Racing TV. He's come close before, and he's and obviously with play tracks, this is kind of an advantage for him. He knows that if he can get that one extra little run, he'll have a chance at it. Story with a big power move there, coming off from the top side back to the bottom, Janzik. Not able to hold him back. Stoy is now for sure the new leader. He will take over the vic he'll take over that spot here as we are approaching quicker ever so slightly to the pit stops. Remember at about a halfway point, they will need to get that pit stop kind of engaged to situate it out. No stage break here tonight from what I'm being told. They will not have a halfway stage break. This is basically you go in, you race it out amongst each other. No telling what happens there. I believe also we have a little friend of ours coming on board here tonight, and Jess Ruggerberg. I shall call her now the 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 prince the the the, uh, the princess potato master. That she is actually she's actually getting married to the to to the master of potatoes himself, the prince, if you will, Eli the Wild Child. Congratulations to the engagement to you too. Great to have you on board here and have a little listen in. I called on the potato print. Oh, whoa, 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 hold up down there. Look out, look out. Get them back down, back them down. Calm down, boys. Looks like a little bit of trouble down there. Zach Derrick there in the number 10. Might have got himself a little bit in the wrong place, the wrong time. Caution is out, although I'm not really sure why. Hold on a minute. It, I don't see a wreck down there. What? What's going on? Oh, 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 there we go. There's, there's the culprit. Look at the 14. He's got damage on that one. Well, I was trying to figure out what happened down there and what transpired, and I think now we got a good idea of it. Here's another look at it. Watch the 14 star as he comes out the corner. You can see everyone trying to avoid trouble and avoid conviction. Watch the 10. This is a power move right here. He thinks he's got an opening to slingshot through, but... That was probably the worst move he could have done in that circumstance, even though I know, understand what he's trying to do. 
To me, there was no opening in there that really would have gave him full strength to give him a runoff. I'm not sure I would have done that. I mean, that was kind of a... I don't want to call it a silly maneuver, but that was kind of a very tricky little maneuver he came up with because it just... He tried to put it into a place I feel like he really shouldn't have tried to, but, you know, when you're on that track and you're racing, you don't think about that stuff. You only think about one thing, and that's that big gap you see right there. Sees the opening. He thinks he got it. It didn't quite work out that way. And just ends up kind of in that situation. So a bit of a wild circumstance there for the drivers. Everybody going to field them back around and get them cleared up again. Field getting ready to stretch back up into the front and into the zone. We're going to go and take it down to the call line. There's quite a few drivers out there I think that would love to have a listen in or a word on this one. But that was, yeah, like I said, folks, I I don't know if I would have necessarily gone for that move. That was a very risky move. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a clever idea, but I don't think it was the smartest idea, we'll say. Looks like everybody's gonna go into pit road except for one driver out there. That might be Adam. That might be the Steve Madden there. Twenty six. Looks like he's just trying to get his lap back. He doesn't even really mind too much that he knows he's in kind of a proverbial spot. Coming out of pit road first, it'll be Janzik. Just barely eking this one by here. We'll talk from the Oval Sim Performance team right now as we bring in this Andy Fam. Jantic, you got the line, sir. The line is here, and so am I. What's going on, brother? Not much, my friend, but uh, nevertheless, you've had yourself a little bit of a battle here with some of the new drivers and a little bit of a kind of a resurgence here in the truck series. How's things been for you and the crew? Uh, feeling really good so far. Um, the pushes have been really, really good, and as you know, as I'm sure we've all uh, complained, and I'm sure other series have complained, Cup Series draft package just sucks right now. So it's really refreshing to be out here having an absolute blast in these trucks. Yeah, I was about to say, I know a lot of folks out there were a bit disappointed with that Next Gen and the regular Cup Series uh, draft packages. But, man, these truck series definitely seem to be able to pull off a good runner too. But when it comes down to the wire, will you have to try to throw a block at them to try to hold them off? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I have made already, you know, just based on the racing we've done thus far, I've already made a couple plans for later in this race from various positions to be able to make moves and make them successfully to uh, to grab that checkered flag from my team at Ovalson Performance. And uh, look at this this beautiful 2022 Grand End Finger uh, Champion paint scheme that uh, I got the permission to turn pink for our breast cancer awareness race. Just awesome. Yeah, Champion Power Equipment, really, really some of the best people out there, and I just had to mention that right away. Well, we certainly have looked at it a few times out there. Can't quite get too many good angles of it, but nevertheless, still a pretty sweet-looking ride. So, Jantic, best wishes of luck to you, and we'll see what happens here with that number 40. Oh, yeah, buddy. Buckle in. We've got, uh, we've still got more than half of this thing to go. It's going to be a blast. Absolutely. Appreciate your time. 10-4, bud. Zane fam coming on board here tonight, having a little listen in here. I don't think we're going to have enough time to bring in any more drivers here at the moment. So, while Field gets packed back around... While they're at it here real quick, we're going to go ahead and try to get the stream so much situated out here. I do not like the fact that it keeps blurring out on me. That's a bit better. That's a work well we got, I guess. All right, before we go to, back to the green, a little word from our sponsor. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we go back to the green, we want to remind you guys of our good friends over at the Green Mountain Grill section. When you guys need the best wood fire pellet grills on the market, there's only one brand name you can trust, and that's Green Mountain Grills. Be sure to check them out on their website, greenmountaingrills.com, and also check out their local listings on their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram handles and find where you can get your next best grill for their, your day today. All right, back to the action here. Drivers are leading them off out of turn four this time by... The field is set and structured. Rex Hewitt coming on board here tonight saying I'm spotter for, I am spotter for the number 54 truck. Tony Westcott saying is there a lucky dog or wave around for the lap down trucks? I uh, believe there is, but they only have so many of them they can even get that to. So definitely makes a bit of a difference, makes a bit of a, a, bit of a so stealer for them as we bring the green flag back on out. Back to the action we go. 
and looking to end the mid-pack zone. Ironically enough, watch out for that 56 of John Thacker because there's one thing we know around here with that crew. They love to play spoiler around here. Down across the back straightaway, and Allegar Snyder, the ADA, he had the race lead earlier on, got kind of put into a rock and a hard place, and now he's trying to change that completely out. Meanwhile, on the outside of him, that is Richard Fornshell, the number 90, a former Fast and Fun IROC Rally Challenge champion, the season, the former season champion, looking to possibly make a little bit of a show and a game for himself. He's gone on the outside there, this ADA to Gar Snyder, while this Andy Fame Jantic looks on in just absolute disbelief. Once again, the draft line of the trucks being put to full use and pull good as Russ the full bore Kilgore gets the runoff and gives him a little bit of a push and shove, trying to help out the team. Every driver for themselves here. Obviously, teams are very critical and a very large part to their success here in this in this venture in this new season ahead. But really, I think the biggest thing that we're going to notice here throughout this racing events and throughout these shows is just who is able to get the timing down just right and who is able to make things work better than everyone else. The one thing they will definitely be watching for, though, in these team events is literally where everyone places and where everything goes down at. Team points are very much on the line, but I mean, at the end of the day, as a driver, I know one thing. I may be there for my team, but I do not hesitate to try and go for the race win if it so desires to come up. Wheeling them off the corners here, the front straightaway still. Everybody in a very tandem pack, drafts that line here. About halfway done with this one. And again, it really to me has been just absolutely impressive just how well these drivers have come forth and come straight through. Anytime they come out on the track, to me, it's always just impressive to even see anyone even get a glimpse, a little bit of a showcase of how well they handle their nerves and how well they manage themselves. But I think the biggest thing I was watching for tonight was always been, you know, can they hold on to the run and can they hold out long enough if you're up front? Because that's the biggest problem I've noticed. These play tracks as of late, and my, I've even raced in it myself, is that there are folks right out of the gate that just get way too over the top, a little too aggressive you saw earlier on. But as the race kind of progresses through and they just kind of want to put laps down, they seem to kind of venture off from that back off because they know if they get too damaged up, then the driver that's clean and all polished up from saving themselves in the back pretty much could just kind of walk away and steal this one. And obviously, as a driver, you don't want to see that happen. You want to make it a fair, clean race, but at the same time, a very fun and attribution race. The attributes of these drivers going to be really the thing I think that really kind of keeps in their game plan and their strategy when they're talking about all the help and all the run they can get off with. And also, by the way, if you guys are wondering here tonight what the 54 driver is that's being spotted, that's Robert Gillard. Robert Gillard right now, currently the uh, 54 Chevrolet Silverado. He's up 10 spots here at the moment. That is the man that is being spotted right now by our friend Rex Hewitt. Rex, I don't know, maybe you can give us a little word down there too, but I gotta believe it's probably he's got a little bit of hands, a little sweaty down there trying to make his way up to the front here and what kind of company he's got in there. We'll take it to the onboard here for Robert Gillard. We have seen this man on the show before. This is not the first time we've ever seen him. Good to see him back out on the track though and kind of putting up a little run or two and a little bit of a battle down there. On the outskirts of the corners into turn four they go here. Everyone really getting up close and personal. Get a little bit too in, mixed in between. Could be anybody's idea or game plan here. Who can strike it hard and at the best times. 
Rex agreeing what I said earlier. The hands are sweating. The knees weak are not. Arms are heavy, but there's no vomit on a sweater already. It's not mom spaghetti. Come on, guys. Would you go visit? You're not visiting up Eminem's little shop down there in Detroit, are you? All jokes aside here, right back up to the top here. We got Danny, we got Danny Fam in trouble once again, but this time he's got help. His teammate in the 82 of Brock Whitehead is going to hold up the outside line just a little bit because he's got the 53 of Christian Wilcox right there behind him. But again, if you're a team right now and you're seeing drivers really kind of help blocking up front and kind of doing this, you got to think eventually, sooner or later, somebody gets impatient. Someone's not going to be playing out that way. We've seen it here before, where if you get a little bit too over the top, you can find yourself into more trouble than it's worth. And that's where you really got to be careful. But remember, that outside line has proven to be a, a bit of a disaster point as much as a saving grace for many out here. So it depends on your circumstances. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right through the corner, though. Where on earth did the 31 of Randy Cawthon come from? You saw him just swing it straight right there. Looks like he wants to get that Toyota Tundra right up to the front. The number 51 is currently on the charge. And the Bose 31 Toyota Tundra, man, he is right now in the hammer down position while Robert Jalar just literally snuck right ahead of him as well. These guys are finding openings when they can and striking it big where they can get it. But again, the outside line is still not lining up properly here. And that's giving the bottom lane all they want, what they want to see. You can see him now finally starting to form the choo-choo Talladega draft frame. They better get it going here. If they don't get that thing lined up into a nice formation here, they will not be able to push the trucks up as hard as they want. The only reason you get a good, strong aerodynamics of the truck to hold you on the track and build more speed is because once you line them up, that clean air drafts right through up in the flow of the trucks. And let's go up. Kind of goes in between and up and down where the spots are that opens the, opens up the speed handles. Think of it as like kind of a little bit. Think of it kind of as like a little, uh, kind of like what an airplane is. Or what you would see look, with the way the shape is of those uh, fighter jets. You may know some. Those cockpits are designed to help let the air flow around the uh, cockpit be able to just kind of stream across the streamline around. In drafting. It's no different. You're trying to make sure the airflow kind of stretches off and bounces right off the off the top of the windshield and then kind of presumes straight down into the airflow to where the wing is. That spoiler back there is really a big thing and a big striking point to help and get these drivers more speed and more carry in the turns. The more the airflow is controlled, the more it handles. Now, again, that's not to say that you can't do it without a little spoiler in the back. We've seen it before where the smaller the spoiler the airflow is kind of decreased down and more and kind of makes it more into a kind of a bump and run kind of car unless you don't turn on the uh, pl restrictor plates like they did back in the 80s and 90s in this case these drivers are running with the restrictor plates so again they're having to rely more on being closer together to help increase the airflow to help really build more speed and stick around in the packs but as they continue to press on they can still push each other around a little bit and help each other out so if you ever watched an 87s race, you'll know what I'm talking about, but, or even the Car Tomorrow races. We haven't seen those yet on our show, and believe me when I say it, we're ready to get them on. They have them in iRacing. We want to see the Car Tomorrow on the track. But if you ever watch those or watch these, you can notice something very similar and very specific. The way the airflow is created, it helps really garner more speed, more control, and really they don't have restrictor plates to them. The 87s and the Car Tomorrows do not have anything like that. Now, Grant, yes, you can pull up real close and quickly with these guys and everyone else, but the restrictor plates on them are a lot more giving, and really they aren't even there, to say the least. At least that I've experienced. Tony Westcott saying, digging the paint scheme on that truck of the number 54. He's talking about Robert Gillard there, who's currently up at the top four. Talked about him earlier on, that real tree machine. He was building up a lot of speed, building up a lot of run, and right in front of him, is the man that knows how to run a play track with the best of them, Brandon Ball, the B-17. And that last time, again, I want to remind you some, last time he came out on a play track, it was really by a half a truck link that went to the very end down that front straightaway of Talladega. And again, because of where the placement is down there, I think that really was kind of what helped 
give him a shot at winning it out and surviving with the best of them as some drivers continue to make it through the field. Joshua Caudill, the number 25 here, trying to put the Black Mamba machine back into the fight, back into the zone. I believe that's the, the Black Mamba there. We'll see. Got the big M there. I would assume that was his. Oh, good person. Give me a better view of that camera angle, would you? What do you mean you can't give me a better? There it is. That's what I wanted. Yep, that's the Mama Sports Academy number 25 machine. Good to see him still rocking that out. Of course, uh, in good loving memory of there of Kobe B. Bryant. Unfortunately, we went back in 2020, we lost him a little. We lost him way too early, and we lost him in the really in a bad circumstances situation. But his name and memory always live on in the world of sports and even in the world of racing. Can't help but give a little love down there. Rex saying we have some sweaty bombs in the trucks. Well, I mean, the good news is we're not playing video games here. They would have probably said we have some sweaty drivers out on the track. So <laughs> that's uh, that's beyond the point, though. And I'll say this once and I'll say it again, folks. If you call this a game, so be it. But in my opinion, this is nothing like a game. And this is coming from a guy that raced on NASCAR Heat for the longest time and even played a lot of other games. This, to me, is not a game. It is, uh, yes, it is a virtual world, and yes, it is a virtual simulation, but that's the key fact right there, simulation. And the reason is because of the fact that it is a simulation, it is garnered to help make things very more intriguing and more interesting, and it just gets really to be hard and controlling, to say the least. Off the clutches, off the corners, every driver for themselves. Still nobody giving it. Oh, I say that. You'll be giving it an inch. Now they're going to have to give a few inches. Go back it off. Caution. Whoa. Major wreck in Susan in fields there. And I see a couple of guys that probably weren't expecting this to happen like that at all. Good Lord almighty. Big wreck coming out of turn four there. And I'm not even sure where to begin. So we'll just start with what we usually do it. Initiate the P. Timothy replay. See if we can find the culprit. Looks like maybe coming. Oh, right there. There it is. George Young. You see the 48. Wrecking hard there. And that is a tough break there for him. Usually you do not see him making mistakes like that. But this was definitely a circumstance different. We'll take a look at it from another angle here. This is going to be a little bit interesting to see from this camera shot. Oh, I'm not even sure what happened there, honestly. That's kind of weird. Wilcox, I don't did he I don't even think he got touched. I just think he just went straight right. Last look of the replay. This is on the 53. Did he even come off? Everything looks fine here. Whoa. Okay, that's where I'll give you the game reference there. That is definitely net code. And Wilcox, unfortunately, either either net code or literally the right rear tire went straight down and blew up. I'll give I'll say probably it could have been the right rear tire. That thing must have gone. Either way, wow, that is a wild circumstance there. And I'm getting word down there. Yeah, right rear tire actually started to blow off a little bit. Ends up ends up getting everybody in the trouble zone there. That's a darn shame there for the crew. And unfortunately, they'll have to head back into pit road. What a tough break for the 53. We saw him doing really good there for a little bit. Came out here with looking like he was a strong competitor. Looked like he had something dialed in. And now he has to try to work it all the way back up. And I don't think that's what he wanted to have happen. But now joining me in here for the first time here this season and the first time ever on p 3 TV, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Eric Stoy in the number 41. And Eric, right now, up 10 spots. You've been battling for that race lead and battling with some of these guys for quite some time. I got to ask you, man, what? how are you feeling right now on that truck? Oh, man, I'm 
man, this truck is pretty fast. Uh, I got a great teammate that was behind me, pushing me back up to the lead. Uh, but the 40 truck, he's pretty, pretty has a pretty strong truck. So we'll see what we can do in this final few laps. Certainly, indeed, there. So, Stoy, I, I gotta ask you. As you get a little bit closer to the end, closer to the runs here, you think that's going to kind of bring out a little bit more aggression out there? Oh, yeah, you can already feel it out here. People moving in and out and trying to find their partners and just trying to wean it down to the end and let's see what everyone's got. For sure there. Well, nevertheless, Stoy, appreciate it coming on board here tonight. We'll see what happens and transpires for the rest of this, but best of luck to you and the team. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Eric Stoy there, the number 41, having a little listen in, a little word of a, ta word of a talk on the track. We'll head it down now and talk with some of our other drivers here. We're going to bring in from Oval Sim Performance, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the 88. This is Garth Snyder now joining me in at Garth. You know a thing or two about these big, long tracks. You got your first win, obviously, on PC Racing TV at Indianapolis Road Oval Speed, uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But here at Daytona, I mean, you got to believe the drafting and speed going to be a little bit more crucial on this oval-style configuration. Oh, absolutely. I, I love restrictor plate racing. It's a, it's a blast. Uh, got my teammate up here with me, and we're uh, making things work. For sure there, but, man, I, I got to ask real quick. Do you feel like with the teammates here, does that help you or make things a little harder here, knowing that you got a little more pressure this season? Oh, absolutely, and especially at the big tracks like this where you can team up and, and really make a move. Absolutely. Well, nevertheless, Garth, a lot of work to do here. It's still a lot of time to be had. We'll see you here later on. Thank you, sir. From Oval Set Performance, ladies and gentlemen, that is Garth Snyder coming on board. We'll have a little listen in later on with some of the other drivers here, but we're about ready to get back to the action and back to the green. Solid line of a field of drivers coming back in and ready to gyro, dial this one up again. Back to the green flag. Janzik has the advantage early on, though, but he'll have some more company coming up in the name of Sheldon Pearson, the number eight. Sheldon Pearson, the PM and Sons, is back with us here once again. Good to see him coming back onto the show. And Tony Westcott still pulling some Iowa reference out of here, even though I've never heard one person in my life ever say this. He says he dropped the hot pocket on the floor. Just kidding. For those at home that don't know, he basically dropped the ball is what he's saying. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> right off the runs off the corners here. We got a little bit of company coming up as well. The 34 Sean Bounty starting to get a little bit of speed built up. He's up seven spots here. 34 Toyota, the Toyota Tundra designed up machine. Got a little Zephron on that, on that run. I believe that's center run. I don't yeah. Producers, give me a camera angle on that one, would you? Yo, Zeno, Sona. Zenoa? Zenoa? Uh, Zenoa, Zenoa. It's my bad. You can see, his, if you can probably guess, guys, and you're just tuning in for the first time at Pizza Race TV, I have a bad problem with pronouncing days, pronouncing proper um, grammar language, if you will, sometimes. So I do apologize in advance, but I guess that just kind of makes the show a little bit more fun. It gives you guys something to make fun of me about. Westcott saying, just trying to keep it clean. Well, I appreciate that, Westcott. I know you got to keep it clean in the comments section. I know you that well, but... Hey, on the bright side, at least you're staying out of trouble this time. That's I appreciate that from you, sir. So race fans, once again, thank you for tuning on in here tonight. We do appreciate all your love and support you bring to the show. 
And of course out there with the pink flashing around here, these drivers trying to bring a little love and support to all the family members and friends that they have going on with cancer out there. We are trying to do much of the same. So throughout these races, throughout these events, you'll see a lot of pinks coming on the track. So be sure to just keep an eye out for those. And really, just in general, when you guys do get a chance, if you know someone or have a friend that's going through tough times like that, just talk with them. Give them a, give them a hug if you can. Be right there for them when you can't. When you, obviously, I know we're under a little bit of that dress from COVID times. But it's like if you can, you can be with them. Do it every day and all time, man. Do it for them and do it for you know, all those people that are going through it because these folks out here, they are going through a worse, they are going through such a hard time that these drivers are trying to make their lives just a little bit more interesting, a little bit better. Know what they can put on a show and put on a little bit of a battle with 34 of the best coming out onto the track. Also, race fans, if you are uh, just now tuning in as well for the first time, uh, be sure to check out our PTM Racing TV store. We have that down in the comment section down below. Head to our YouTube, subscribe there, and you'll be seeing all this race in its entirety. Again, these races are played Facebook Live sessions. But all races will be going to YouTube no matter what it is, no matter how big or small. Every race goes there at the end of the day. And I do promise you this, in the same 720p Cookshire Carity you see here on Facebook, it'll be the same way up on YouTube, so don't you worry about that. As we're worried about nothing else up front. In the back straightaway here, there's any fan jams and Brock Whitehead going out a little bit as Russ the full bore. Kilgore in the number two goes up top, looking for a run. Down to 20 laps left to go here. Anybody's guess who gets the advantage and who will strengthen their numbers and strengthen their teams. Every driver for themselves here as they continue to muscle bound their charge and muscle their way around the track. Janzik. Right now being very particular, very aware, and self-efficient. While Russ the Fullerboard, Kilgore, and Fortress Fornshell look to just kind of hang around up there and kind of keep their distances. Rex Hewitt saying in the comment section that the team's got a plan. Well, don't, spo don't spoil the plan just yet. You guys should go out there and do your own thing. We're just calling the race, my friend. One second of the onboard camera here right now, and we're going to show a little bit of love back to the man beast. Baba Beast, the sun is still in it, man. He's giving it all she's got, and he's still searching for that first win ever on Pizza Race TV, and I'm not going to spoil or jinx anything, Adam. I don't want to make, I don't want to end up getting him into trouble again, because it seems like every time I talk about this, it seems like he always has some kind of bad luck situation or bad run or just not enough laps kind of boiled down in the fuel brigade to win it out. He is extremely smart on it, saving his fuel and making it for the long haul. But the thing he has struggled with is catching a break at plate tracks because it seems like he always gets stuck in the worst ends of it. Tonight could be a different story. He's being very, very cautious and very smart right now. Strategy's playing in big time here. Right now, the bottom three are all in the same team. Snyder, Jancic. And even, and even a little bit of Brock Whitehead kind of hanging around in there. Excuse me, Brock Whitehead actually is with uh, Southern, excuse me, he is actually with this season Southern Speedway Motorsports. In the Cup Series, he is with Jancic, but in this case, I got to believe uh, teammates are nothing in the Truck Series to him. He doesn't care about that. So I got to add a quick little apology there. I confused earlier on Jancic and Whitehead, Brock Whitehead were in the same group. No, Charles Whitehead is in the same group with Janzik as well as Snyder, but Brock is actually on his own with his own crew and Southern Motorsports Speedway as they call three wide, slow down the back straightaway. Look at Russ the Fulbor Kilgore, the man just found an opening, found a seam. He says, just like a thief of the night, why don't I sneak right in here? And he just sneaks away a whole their whole field, but there's problem down there, there's major trouble. We got a big wreck coming off of turn four. Couple of guys involved in this one here. Looks like the Marauder James Harris almost collected in there. Might have escaped with his truck. Maybe not so much what he was expecting or really wanted to see out there or anybody else. But for that matter, let's take a look at the PT Mr. Replay and see what transpired here. Somebody got transmognified down there on that track. Looks like I'm seeing Dan the Man Starner get it caught up in mix. Oh boy. 
I'll tell you one thing right now. When you see that big wreck coming in front of you, that is the scariest thing you can imagine. And as much as it is literally the worst thing you can imagine, it's not fun. It is not fun to be thinking what's going on down there. I think that might have been Thacker that got kind of started in the mix of it. So we'll take another look at it. Looks like a little back off there and for the Thacker camp, but the three... Unfortunately, uh, Matthew Moniak ends up kind of getting the rest of the whole field out. Moniak had a run. He found an opening, but unfortunately, the seam closed right as he was getting in there and trapped all that air around him, and that's going to cost him big time here. Well, race fans, back to the call. List we go. I'll, let, I'll even ask you guys in the comment section down below. If I can't get a driver in, let me know. Who do you want to come on board for the next go-around? Because I know there's a lot of you out there that want to listen in to some of these guys. And there's a lot of you out there that want us to talk with them. I know the Man Beast has been uh, waiting to hear from us. So, Man Beast, how you doing, buddy? Uh, good. A little nervous. Just uh, trying to survive, I guess. Uh, for sure there. And uh, presuming you're probably nervous because I said earlier on I wasn't going to try to jinx you. And now I just brought you in and you know how that broadcaster <laughs> curse seems to always be. Yeah, I don't believe in luck. I don't believe in the jinxes or uh, that karma stuff because it never pays me when I need it. So I'm not too worried about it. Talk away, buddy. Fair, fair enough there. Well, we're bringing you in because uh, Papa Beast has come on board here tonight. He wanted to see his son get out of here, and you are certainly doing a great job out of here in the top ten. But with the field starting to shrink down a little bit and laps winding down, how much aggression do you feel like this uh, man's maintenance 29 has got to start pulling off here? Uh I got plenty of aggression left. I'm just trying to play it safe and uh, try not to, to cause no issues up here to take me and any of my teammates out. Just try to make some moves to the front. Absolutely. Well, nevertheless, Harry, you definitely got a little work to do in time to brigade. So best of wishes and luck to you, sir. Appreciate you, man. The man beast, William Man Jr., everybody. So we'll take it down now and talk with some of our other drivers here. we got quite a few on the list here we can bring in and talk to. So we'll uh, hit it up, I believe, with Jonathan Diamond. From Shake and Bake Racing. No relation to the Shake and Bake Racing League. Here he is now, ladies and gentlemen, the 39, Jonathan Diamond and the Dr. Pepper machine. And Diamond, I got to ask you, man, are you always just running that uh, Dr. Pepper scheme out here when you come on the show? Yeah, for the Chuck Series, usually because, oh, I'm still in college, so I don't really have time to make paint at the moment. But I'm going to make maybe two different ones for this season, probably in the next week or so. For sure there, and obviously I know the uh, Dr. Pepper scheme has a little bit of a thing to it, painting the numbers pink, but you also got the tires, a little bit rims-wise, a little more pinked out, and a little crossbow in the middle, or, in, or excuse me, on the back left corner, there in the right rear corner. Um, anything special going on with that, or just really just involved for breast cancer awareness? I just really just show support. And I, this was like last second, I had to change it. I couldn't really do too much because I didn't have enough time before the race to do it, but I just wanted to do something for it at least. Absolutely. Well, nevertheless, you and the Shake and Bake Racing right now currently got a little bit of work to do, but still plenty of time to finish it out. Daytona, best wishes and luck, sir. Thank you. John the Diamond here, former champion on the circuit, obviously, for the Fast and Fun Riley Challenge as well as the uh, Ryrock Series. He has won a fair before, and as a matter of fact, him and Janzik are both involved in the closest finishes ever recorded here on PT Racing TV. One one thousandth of a second. No, you are not hearing that wrong. I am dead honest. They went straight to the line, dead even. And Janzik would end up falling victim to the second place spot. So, but he would not be denied on the next one. As they went to war with Dan the Man Starner and him at Kentucky, which ended in a complete dead on draw. It actually got to the point we showed you guys on air. We didn't know who won because our live timing said it was Starner that won. But on the iRacing end, it said Janzik won. We didn't know who won, so we just said you're both champions and just called it good. So that's live timing for you sometimes. It can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. But at the end of the day, that's how the cookie crumbles. And back to the action we go for more of it. Will we get another wild and chaotic fish? So that remains to be the question. Around these parts, you can just never guess what's going to happen next. Building up the speeds, building up the momentum here. Drafting and pushing is going to be the name of the game. 
There ain't no more holding back. There ain't no more laying off when you can't. There is only one thing you could do. Just charge, mount, and straddle this one down. Hard out the corners here. Brandon Ball going straight up top there. B-17 looking like he just ended up finding a new bingo card because he literally sent it up to the top. He punched his ticket up top. He punches his way down on the outside. He's looking for any open area he can now and hoping for the best. In the front to the back here, though, right now it is still anybody's guess who gets the advantages, who makes the mistake, and who gets the shot at winning this. Some of the guys we haven't talked about earlier on here, like the 32 of Daniel Half, have kind of marched their way into the field here, and they are still in this race. You saw earlier on, there are a little bit of troubles for the 89 Rubber Wynn Jr., and even the 95 of Adam Scrum. Scrum, completely too many laps down. Tyler Meek, Steve Madden, Robert Gillard, and George Young and Charles Whitehead all kind of involved in that, so they will not really be able to finish this out the way they are hoping for. But for newcomers like Daniel Half, you got to wonder, will this be their opportunity to strike while the iron's hot? Or even Zach Derrick, who we know he can be aggressive and can push that thing up to the front. We saw him do that earlier on. He had no troubles doing that at all, that's for sure. But as of right now, he seems to be backing himself off a little bit, trying to stay away from trouble zones. Maybe he's starting to see what we've been seeing all along and along, which is basically drivers just getting a little too aggressive out of the gate and a little bit too much off the starts. Still a lot of opportunity left here for these drivers to make their make or break their season. Which one will it be, though? They will have only 10 laps to decide it. Stretching them down across the stripes into a 10 to go. If there is ever a time to get this one going and ever to finish this one out, it's here and now. If you're tuning in for the first time, folks, I recommend you share this one in because with only 10 laps to go at Daytona, you never know what happens here. Whether you're on our YouTube or on your Facebook, we don't know what's going to happen. Just share this in because we are about to witness a finish. As a three, and Matthew Moniak once again gets sent out of the ballpark and into the grassy plains. He'll have to try to dive her back in and get it right into the zone. He's going to have a lot of work to do. Coming off a of turn four, we'll have nine laps remaining. Oh, you can feel the intensity. You can cut it with a knife. There are no gimmies here. It's either you push and shove to the front or you find a way to run the outside line. Nobody is going up there yet. And all honesty, it may be better that way. They may want to stay away from it just for now and wait till the very last minute. Going to the outside, Daytona is a little bit of a risk here. Because you're going to have to pretty much pile these guys up close together, pile them in like that, and sometimes that stuff happens right behind them. Eric Stoy going for a ride there on the back straightaway. Caution is out. Oh, they're wrecking big time here. Watch out. Oh, and a little bump, bump and bang and battle back there. The 21 of Jamie Graham getting cost in it. Eric Stoy, we saw him unfortunately getting in the worst end of it, and that is a tough break for him and the crew. Found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time, and that is not what you want to see happen ever. But well, here's the PT Mr. Replay. And I got a feeling what you're going to see is really what I was talking about coming off that back, coming into that turn and off the back stretch. Look at that right there. You see Sheldon Pierce, he kind of sneak his way in. He gets Kilgore kind of flip flops and sideways there. Richard Fornshell kind of in the mix. Sean Bounty, I see him kind of spin out there. Unfortunately, he's already kind of lost and in the, out of the water here. Got one more PTM to replay to look at here real quick. We'll see if we can get a good look at it. And I don't think we're going to be able to in this case. So we're just going to have to call that one good. 
we we're going to show the onboard camera here of uh, Rich, uh, Russ the full board Kilgore. But in this case, I think we're going to have to kind of lean that off here. So, But one thing we can do, though, is uh, have a little listen in with him and see how he's o if he's okay down there. Russ, you got a copy, sir? I do. How are you? Doing pretty good. But uh, right now, man, that number two took a little knock and knocker there on the back straightaway. But I got a feeling that you're at least driving okay and feeling okay after that. Do you How, how much damage do you feel that you took? Uh, just knocked the steering wheel a little bit, but it seems to be RPMs are okay, and I am not going to the back of this pack, so I'm going to let it rip. That's the only way to do it around here. From our end, honestly, everything looks okay on our end, so I got a feeling basically just kind of boiled down to can you hang in there and really put to the and put the boost to the end? Yeah, I'm going to just hook up to Sheldon's bumper and try to push him to the victory because uh, I got a little rear end damage too, so I don't think I'll be able to get up front, but try to get a top five out of this call it a day for sure there appreciate your time though from mid-pack racing there russ all right thank you russ the full board kilgore ladies and gentlemen have a little listen in with him we'll go ahead and take it down with some of the other guys here as well we're going to talk with the freedom mullet racing and uh I believe we are missing a few of them out here tonight but the good news for us is we still have a few of them we can talk with i think we're going to bring in one of the newcomers here if he's willing to talk with us See if we have the 28 on the show. Justin White looking around here. I'm not seeing him around. I'm not seeing his name in here. So I think we're just going to have to go with Dan the Man Starter in this case. Trying to find old star. Trying to find our old friend Star Boy. Can't seem to find him though. I'm not really seeing him. Producers, help me out here. Where is he at? Wait, I know he's in the trace here. He's, right, he's driving the 14, but the problem is he's showing up the 35 on our red. Oh, there he is. All right, there we go. We found him. Let's go ahead and bring him in. Lines being a little busy. Lines a little bit of a call. Live TV can be certainly something, but certainly this truck has been uh, put into a few good spots here tonight here, Starner. But now you got a chance to possibly walk away with the W if you can hang on to this. What's going on down there? Uh, I don't know, man. I've jumped all over. I prefer this view much over my uh, view earlier when I slammed in the pit wall. Doing pretty good down here. I was about to say, it seems like the bottom lane seems to be where everyone likes to hang around at, but you think with this last restart, is anybody going to try to go to the extreme outside and try to take the three-wide salute in perspective? Um, so I'm not going to lie. I think right now the outside line's a little faster. Um, that might have just been in the back, but guys, I was pushing up from the top line in the back, so I think I'm going to stick with it if I can. All right, well, nevertheless, here's a ton of appreciate you coming on board and having a little listen in with us. Best wishes of luck to you and your team at Freedom Mullet Racing this season. Thank you very much. Take it easy, bud. You too. Dan, the man, star, ladies and gentlemen, to the number 14, and I really hope they can get that live timing issue figured out because I, because I know that he is on here. It says he's in the 35. He's not. Nah, he's in the 14. But here we go, race fans. This is it. Final five coming your way. And right now, if you're Craig Jansen, the only thing you're thinking about is just get a good restart and try to hold down the field in the fort. But Sheldon Pearson, you know, he is still winless on p TV. Is tonight finally his night? He feels like he's been owed this one for quite some time. He has had plenty of opportunities to get there. But this is definitely a make-or-break moment for him and the crew. Names that have never won here at p TV include George Young. Sheldon Pearson mentioned a minute ago, Robert Gillard, Zach Derrick, Adam Scrum. They've never won here on Pete's Racing TV. They've got wins in other series and divisions, but never on our show. Will that change here tonight? Don't count out the man beast. Lee Man Jr. may be in the back of the pack, but he can still put up a fight from where he's at. Off the restart into the gun. The bottom lane better off suited than the outside, but that will change as they lead him in through turn one down into turn two. Oh, look at now. Here he comes. The 91. Kevin Kershaw intertwines, intervenes. He says, hey, boys, you didn't really forget about me tonight, did you? Here he comes. The champion power equipment, 91. Chevrolet Silverado in full brigade, full charge mode. You would have thought he was really driving for NASA right now because he just initiated launch sequence A through Z. Build this thing back up and build the power back up. He is backing her down in on the outside. Jandek trying to hold it, trying to hammer him off and trying to hold it off. Only four to go. This could be anybody's guess. 
But my, my, what a power move that was. Be able to be, to work around the corner as well as he did and make this thing work as well as it needed to. But again, he's kind of caught off in a bit of a spot, bad spot here. Drivers are going to get a little too antsy. Brock Wyatt goes below the O-line, gets set into the grass. He's trying to get back in there. He can't find an opening. He's going to have to stay down the bottom. He won't get a chance. Oh, he's going to force it up there, though. Almost gets into it there with a 95, unfortunately. I'm completely evaluating him there. Three laps remain. This is the hot shot. This is the hot booking spot right here. You go big or you go home. That's the only way they do it around these parts. Coming off into turn one. Now down into turn two. Here the 91 Kevin Kershaw in the champion power equipment. Chevrolet Silverado trying to get one last big leg up on the field. Snyder is trying to help out Jantek and the team with Dan the Man Starter falling from behind. The only Freedom Mullet Racing team member that has a chance to hold up with the team. And meanwhile, the mid-pack racing scene, Russ Kilgore and John Thacker are dead even side by side one another. They look to help each other out. This is anybody's guess who will claim victory for their team and who will claim victory for the first time this season. We are down to the two laps to go. Green flag high in the air. Watch out for Harris. The Marauder spies an opening. He wants to go high. He wants to go for it. Will he get help? He's going to get one little ragdoll push from the 33 of Trey Whitehead, but it's not enough. He's stuck in the wrong place at the wrong time. He's trying to use the side draft as an advantage here. They're leading him down the back straightaway. Still three wide side by side back and forth with one another trying to make the advantage work. Champion Power Clips 91 and Kevin Kershaw falls back a little bit. Look at the 56, John Thacker now delivering the run. The mid-back racing crew is going for broke, going up to the top. He's got to run. He's got to see and with the white flag coming out this time by it. Anybody's guess who's going to win this? By a full truck link, Jantic had that one locked in. But will that be the same case? You can't predict the future. You can't predict any of the races here tonight. That's for sure. Wind them down, pulling them off of the corners, down the front straight away in the turn one and two. Oh no! But Zacker goes in a rush, they crash on the back straight away. Whoever can evade it can take the race lead. Sheldon Pearson evades, he's hanging on. Russ Kilgore's right there in two, but look at Wilcox. Christian Wilcox has got a clean truck. Can he keep it going? He's got a run, he's got the momentum. They'll bring him down and around here. This is all for not. No, no gimmies here. Down on the turn four. Into the brigade. White flag to the finish line. And Christian Wilcox, for the first time in his career, will win at Daytona. Eric Stoick comes away second, third. That's Tyler Meeks. An unbelievable finish. Ends up seeing the mid back racing boys get caught up in the wrong place at the wrong time. And sees a young man win for the very first time in his career on PT Racing TV. An all-out exciting finish and a conclusion unlike any other. What a finish and a race, to say the least. And right about now, I know what exactly is going through that young man's mind right now. He's got to be just thinking... Finally got that win I was looking for for so long and yet all things it comes at Daytona Him and the crew down there. have got to be livid and excited for this one Wilcox with Southern Speed Motorsports right now with Brock Whitehead, Jacob Givens, Randy Cawthon, Robert Gillard and William Mann Jr. All got to be hysterical right now just thinking what on earth did they just get themselves into but what they did is find themselves in the victory lane and now Celebration time for the drop for their teammates and the team. Unbelievable folks, just unbelievable to say the least here tonight. An awe inspiring finish and a crazy finish to say the least between the drivers, between the fields here. Nobody gave an inch. Nobody gave up any chances, to say the least. Somebody was walking away with a W. We knew that much, but we could not have guessed 
that the big wreck would happen and give the opening to Wilcox. Here is our race results now popping up on your screen here, presented in part by Green Mountain Grills here tonight. Christian Wilcox, your winner. Second goes Eric Stoy. Third, Tyler Meeks. Fourth to Randy Coffin. We have to Sean Bounty. Sixth to Russell Fullbore Kilgore. Seventh to the Willie Mann Jr. Eighth to Sheldon Pearson. Ninth to Robert Wynn Jr. Tenth to Richard Fornshaw. Rounds out your top ten in the X section here. Take a look at our other results. Finishers here, man. Some names you would not have guessed. Ended up in a bad spot. Jancic being one of them, as well as Starner. Brandon Ball, good showing, though. Still hanging in there. James Marauder Harris gets himself into a bad spot on the later half of this one. And then guys down the very lower end, names like George Young, you would not expect there, or even Kevin Ward or Robert Gillard, of all things. But they ended up in that spot here tonight, unfortunately. And that is kind of how it ends for their season opener, if you will. But plenty of time to make up for it as the number 33 of Tyler Meeks pulls her back down into pit road. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk with the top three from Oval Sim Performance. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the third place finisher here tonight, Tyler Meeks in the Camping Royal 23 Silver Off Chevrolet. Meeks, my man, you had to avoid and get out of that mess as quick as possible, but the damage definitely took its toll to get to the last minute run there, wasn't it? Oh my word, I am so excited. We had a very rough start with this Camping World Chevrolet. Lap six, three wide, I got turned. I thought it was game over. I finally got back on the last lap, or the lead lap at like lap 65. And just kind of closed my eyes and cold trickled it through the last couple uh, turns right there. And <laughs> we got a third place out of this. You got a third place out of it. You're getting yourself into a nice little hub of spot and a good place to really position yourself for you and the team in this season. I have to ask you, sir, as you are now coming away with a top three podium at Daytona, is there anybody you want to thank her, sir? Uh, yeah, I want to thank the uh, you guys, first of all, in the booth for uh, broadcasting us and then uh, Green Mountain Grills for sponsoring along with Champion Equipment. Uh, Camping World for coming on board for this season. Hopefully they're going to be a good partner for us and uh, – what a way to start out the beginning of the season with a third place finish. Absolutely, Meeks. Congratulations, man. What a finish for you and the team. We'll see you very, very soon, sir. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Meeks there coming on board here. Having a little listen in from his end. Second place here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to give it out down to the th 41. We talked to him a little earlier on. Well, I think now might be a good time to get his thoughts and feelings about this one. From 3Y Motorsports, ladies and gentlemen, this is Eric Stoy in the number 41 rejoining us here in the call list as I'm tuned in with you here down actually in, P in Pit Road. And, you know, looking at this thing right now, honestly, I think it could have came out a little bit worse for wear. You managed to get out of that one a lot better than most did in that big wreck. No, I ended up scraping the wall in the last lap and going way in the back and then the big one happened, and we myself through that that mess and end up in second. Surprise. Surprise, surprise. Hey, man, at the end of the day, though, this is Daytona, and I think anytime you get a podium, that is worth the price of admission and a good finish. And I know for you and your team, obviously, it was a long, hard, adventurous journey. For, but talk me through this one, man. Is this really – is this kind of the way you want to continue on with this season? You want to really build off this, or do you feel like you guys – just do something a little bit better that no other team is expecting. Oh, I think there's a lot to work on. I mean, it's the first race of the season. There's there's going to be a lot of short track races, and you never know what's going to happen in those races. Absolutely, indeed. But nevertheless, though, sir, it has been a wild, frenetic race, to say the least. So, Eric, I got to ask you, man, as you're walking away second here tonight, who do you want to thank here? Oh, man, I'd like to thank uh, actually my team owner, uh, James Harris, for for putting me on the team and uh, picking a great team. I think we got it this year. Absolutely. Well, Eric, congratulations on that second-place finish, and what a way to start this season. All right, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the number 41, give it up for Eric Stoy as we finally headed down here to the race winner, race fans. He's been waiting for this one for quite some time. And boy, howdy, he is going to be one happy camper here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, in victory lane, give it up for the 53, Christian Wilcox. Wilcox, <laughs> we, we said it on the comments. We said it on the shot right as they went into the big one. We said whoever can get through that big wreck and find their way around, they were going to win this. You did it. 
you found it, and you're taking home gold finally on PT Marines TV. Finally, I uh, you know before before we get into this, I wanna I guess I got into James Harris a little bit. Everybody was checking up, but it was white flag. I had to keep my foot in it, so I'm sorry if there was any collateral damage. Um, but yeah, first win in the Fast and Fun all across all the series. First time on uh, on your channel. This is a great first win. I am so so excited about this. Now, obviously, I know you got a lot going on here with the team and the crew here getting this one into victory lane for the first time. But I have to ask you, though, but with this being the first win of the season, really, how much pressure does this add on for the rest of the season? Because obviously a W is one thing, but this is a win at Daytona. Now you got a long list of racing to go. How much pressure does that put on you now thinking about it for the next race? One race at a time. Uh, I will say that I'm very happy with my team, uh, Southern Speed Motorsports. Uh, we uh, we worked really well together tonight, and I think that's just going to be a uh, a contributing factor to our success as this season drags on. I think we're going to have a, a few wins across the team. Maybe not for me, but I got some some really strong drivers on my team, so it'll be good. Absolutely. But one week at a time. One week at a time. Absolutely, Christian. Well, nevertheless, bud, you're going to walk away with the victory and the first one of your career on PT Race TV. Who do you want to thank here, sir? Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my sponsors first and foremost. Uh, big shout out to Green Mountain Grills for putting this on in their league. Uh, shout out to Chick Fil A, Century Complete, and Terramana Tequila. Um, and then once again, my team, Southern Speed Motorsports. We got one. On to next week. On to next week, indeed. You are the winner, though, here tonight. Congratulations, Christian Wilcox. Great to see you in victory lane at last, sir. Thank you. Your race winner here tonight, Christian Wilcox, walks away with the W. And a big thank you again, of course, to the friends over at Green Mountain Grills. If you guys need the best foot fire pellet grills, they're the only brand you can trust. And be sure to check out their website, GreenMountainGrills.com, as well as their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram handles. You'll get more information from there on their local listings and playlist product line. To all you fans at home, though, for tuning on in, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it. Next time you see them, it's at USA International Speedway. So get ready for some short track madness there. We are back with the Champion Power Equipment Cup Series tomorrow night. Beware and be witnessing. We are going to see those cup cars at Myrtle Beach Speedway. Stay tuned. Crazy action and racing to come. But from all of us here at PT Race TV, thank you so much for tuning in. Head over to our store, PT Race TV store, and, our web, and the website, of course, down at YouTube for PT Racing TV on YouTube. Subscribe there to catch all the action. And also, like and follow us up here if you enjoyed this show and you enjoy all the commentary I've done tonight. We have always try to put on a show each and every time out for you fans at home and everyone around. So, for all of us here, we appreciate you. We, thanks, we say thank you. God bless. Take care. And until the green flag is flying high next time on PT Race TV. Good night, everybody.